Do the 2024 updates cross this over to your shopping list? <laughs> I'm Steph. I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. Today we're testing out the 2024 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport and here right off the top is what's interesting about this. Mm, is it the excessively long name? Well, there's that, but okay. also there's this. 2020 this launched based on the three row Volkswagen Atlas, which was already a couple years old at that point. Right. So you'd think that right now we'd be looking at a new generation because no. it's seven or so years old. Not so much. Now we're looking at a refresh, significant refresh for 2024 with a rumor coming that there will be a new generation in 2026, not confirmed. And my take on that mm. is they're just gonna come up with an EV. Very likely. And instead of dumping all sorts of money into a new generation, that's gonna get phased out fairly quickly with all the mandates for electrification. Starting with the outside. You have a lit up front logo. And rear. Yeah, mm -hmm. ID4 style, and that's what Volkswagen's moving toward with all of its vehicles. You have a light bar across the top and a light bar across the rear, mm -hmm. and it's really big. Yeah, it is. So for comparison, we have an X5 this week as well, and I opted to put the X5 in the garage. Mm -hmm. it, it fit. Just looking at this, it looks... I can't think of the right word. Like, I don't want to say big and cumbersome, but knowing that this is the two row and the Atlas is the three row, mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into more of this in the competition side um, as we wrap up, but one of the larger two rows as far as footprint goes. For sure, and we can summarize that really quickly by saying we looked at the Passport, we looked at the Blazer, and we looked at the Grand Cherokee, and this is longer than all of those. It's only 13 centimeters shorter than the three row Atlas. But it doesn't jump into the other territory for the other segments. Right. But again, more on that later on. Front looks fine, very chiseled, very, very angular. They get the nice uh, C shaped daytime running lights. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the nice pattern for the rear lights. It, not that it's bland around the sides, but yeah. it doesn't stand out. I like it. I, I've always liked the look of the Atlas compared to the rest of the really? both. Yeah, two and three row segments. It's very upright, very boxy. So that covers the outside. Let's look at the changes on the inside, and there's quite a lot that's been updated in here. You know, I would love to look at things in the dark. Oh my goodness. No. You're jumping right in here, yep. are you? Okay. I know you have lights, Volkswagen. <laughs> I know you do, because they're all over the damn car. The one place, the one place it's not is for the temperature controls and the volume slider. Never mind, you guys don't have a volume knob. Yeah. Maybe talk to Honda and see how well that worked out and how quickly they move back. The rest of the car is so good, mm -hmm. but not to backlight the one thing that is important and more so there's nowhere to rest your thumb or your wrist as you play around with the screen mm. because if i want to my volume is going to go up or down my temperature is going to go up or down right it's just it's i'm starting with that because it's really the only issue so you're right that when you touch things down here, it affects the screen. Mm -hmm. And you know, like most of us, we spend most of our time in CarPlay these days when we're in a car. Right. The other thing that's an issue is when I'm doing stuff toward the top of the screen in CarPlay, mm. there's a pull down menu that gets you to a shortcut oh. for some functions. And so if I'm up here trying to hit the search button, now of course it's not doing it. Because it's but in the middle, I can see it. Yeah, there it is, yeah. And then, it, so that gets you to your auto stop sort and a few other things as a shortcut. Which but isn't bad, like it's a nice, it's a well laid out system and unlike the Alfa Romeo that mm. we had, there's a fixed bar on the left. Yes. But the Alfa Romeo had really, really tiny buttons for, or sorry, tiny touch points for the CarPlay, but here, full size. Right. I'm okay with the square button that's like the home activate mm. thing button. Took me a while to get used to, but big tiles, everything's just a swipe up or down or left to right. I'll still never like climate controls that are without capacitive but button, touch buttons. Mm -hmm. Butt touches, touch <laughs> buttons, or hard touch buttons. But it's, I can't fight the industry. No, and I do like this screen. It's significantly larger than mm. it was in the 2023 model. And other than the things that we pointed out, it works well, it's quick. Mm -hmm. It's responsive. And it's reflective of all the interior ambient mm. colors, which 
I wish Mercedes would do this. Yeah. Right? Just tie the graphics in. Because we have orange. That's why I picked orange. So it's on the dash. It's on this cool part here that lights up mm -hmm. that says cross bore with a bunch of little squares. Yeah. Not quite Ionic 5 ish, but. It's not always backlit. It's not during the day, but when right. a light. The night lighting comes on. That's it appears, it. and it looks really cool as long as the as well as the ambient lighting underneath the the panel here. And you get it in the footwell, you get it in the sides so sides of the door. Um, I don't mind the instrument cluster. I mm -hmm. like that you can change the view with one touch of a button instead of screwing around digging through stuff. Because sometimes people want a different view, and the steering wheel itself is very well laid out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not well laid out. What's that? The rear wiper. Oh, what's and your I, issue with the rear wiper? You gotta push forward on the wiper. Oh. Just give me a little flicker thing at the end of it. Mm. Don't try and change things that people are so familiar with. And I know we have the cars for a week at a time, and if we owned it, we'd get used to it, mm -hmm. but it's just unnecessary to me. Speaking of windows, it looks from the outside when you look at this as though there should be some visibility issues because it's a pretty tall mm -hmm. shoulder and a fairly narrow window line around. I haven't had any vis visibility issues really? at all with this. And actually, now that you mentioned the rear wiper, it's nice and large. It, it is. It's a it's nice just, big visible, visible space toward the back. Just the activation point that's a little yeah. weird for me. Uh, do you care for the seats that are too short for my thighs? I do care that leatherette is standard in Canada now. You don't even have to deal with getting a cloth seat if you're looking at the base trim. And you got these nice little blue inserts. That's with the exact line, which is what we're testing here. Right. Yeah, and that's leather, as well as the high line, which is the middle trim here mm. in Canada. But you don't get the blue with the leather that's in the middle trim, only with the exact line. It looks really nice with like, this blue exterior color, though. But if you're sitting on the seat, you don't really see I it. I know, but it's, it's caught my attention immediately mm. when I sat down in the car for the first time. Another thing that's new for the 2024 updates is the shifter. And they've I, gone with this so little paddle. Good. It is really good. It's The old one was clunky and in the way, and we, mm. we're noticing this more and more as more manufacturers are trying to figure out what they're gonna do with their shift by wire systems. This is the pinnacle as far as I'm concerned. Same thing that BMW is doing. Same thing Porsche has. Yeah, we don't need any more than this. It's, it's not buttons, and so you can't make a mistake. You're gonna pull one direction or the other, and it's just, it's great. And all we need is for Mercedes to get rid of that terrible stock shifter. Yes. Oh, anyway, please. Let's go on to something happier, which is the gargantuan amount of space in the rear seats. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, and it's comfortable seating. Mm -hmm. It's not just, here's some space, but you're going to be extremely uncomfortable while you're there. Mm -hmm. Lots of space, great little place to be. Cargo is excellent too, mm. although not as high as the Passport, which surprised me because the Passport is a is not as long. I know, but you this. lose a bunch of rear seat space for the Passport. You do. Which I guess they care about more stuff than people who live mm. in the second row, but that's okay. One more thing with the change to the shift by wire, mm. they've been able to add the storage cover oh, underneath. Oh, through, like um, yeah. A bunch of new manufacturers have yeah. new car start. It's nice that it's there, but with my seating position being as far forward as I need to be, mm. it's just a little hard to access. Moving on to the performance side now, and this is one of the biggest changes for 2024. You can't get a V6 anymore. Now good. that's yeah, it is good. good for some people. But interesting because within the segment, other than the edge, which is aging out very I shortly. The edge is dead. It's Dying. yeah, but then they brought back the Nautilus, so I don't know if there's uh, are going to be fair. another edge. The current edge, as it stands, which is basically dead in the water, mm. you can get that EcoBoost four cylinder. But other than that, pretty right. much everything offers a V6, if not making it standard. Most things it's standard. Yeah. So here so. it's a two liter turbo four, inline four specifically, uh, 269 horsepower, 273 pound foot of torque, all wheel drive, and through Volkswagen's eight speed automatic transmission. I have had no issues with no. the acceleration, with the amount of power, with the distribution of power. Mm -hmm. And I say that not because I was expecting it to be bad, but it's just based on how big this is. Mm. And just the visual footprint, I'm like, well, and is, is that Turbo 4 gonna do enough? And now going back to that Alfa Romeo thing, they have a 1.3 Turbo 4, yeah. but it's also a plug-in hybrid, but the whole doing less with more, and I know Volvo does super and turbo charging, but here it's just a straight two liter turbo four. The 2024 four cylinder is higher powered than the last year's four cylinder. Right. And pretty well matches the power on the previous V6. Little like slight differences, mm. 
m- more, different engine, yeah. completely, but if they've kept the power the same. Mm-hmm. And if you want to tow anything, you can go up to 5,000 pounds. Yes, which has not changed from 23. So very interesting on that point. That's a Canadian standard across the board. Every Atlas Cross Sport has a 7 liter fuel tank. And in liters per 100 kilometers, your fuel figures are 12.2 on city streets, 9.2 on the highway, and a blended total of 10.8. The miles per gallon is on a graphic right now at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Going back to the size again, that's not that bad of a number. It's not. The only caveat I would add is that we were averaging closer to 13 on our previous tank of fuel, which is not great. Now, that was a lot of city driving. Yes. And I took it somewhere on the highway it's the week of christmas the two weeks of christmas mm-hmm. so days just blend into each other <laughs> so i was a lot lower i was in the tens but again most of my stuff was highway driving mm-hmm. not too loud for a smaller engine moving thousands and thousands of pounds of car but it does sound like it's working pretty hard <laughs> i think it has to work pretty hard. yeah not the most but... beautiful sounding engine of all time there's some pretty surprising things that are standard, and let me tell you what some of the highlights of those are. Uh, heated steering wheel, eh, not really all that great, but you ventilated seats as standard. In front, yeah. Like, that's that's kind of great. I know you don't care for them, but that's okay. Uh, Two-zone climate control, you get a power lift gate. Heated exterior mirrors. The wireless charger is standard as well. That's kind of great, especially for the price mm-hmm. point. In the low 50s? Yeah, plus the leatherette seating is standard and a whole long list of safety equipment. Your standard safety includes forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, not keep assist, lane keep assist, uh, automatic cruise control, sorry, adaptive cruise control, and your travel assist as well, and your post cross features. So, pretty good for mm-hmm. standard stuff, and they're kind of running into Toyota territory. Okay, we're going to really quickly spin you through pricing and competition here on the 2024 mm. Atlas Cross Sport. Everything we've given you in this video is Canadian, by the way. Most of it's the same in the U.S., but make sure you check your info before you go shopping. Right. In Canada, Comfort Line starts at 51.5 and change. What a steal. Yeah, absolutely. What a steal. Exact Line, which is what we have here, is 61.5 and change. Still a steal. Let's go through the competition now. 2024 Honda Passport comes standard with a non-turbocharged V6. Mm. Pricing is between 50... 50,006 and 58 in Canada. More cargo, slightly less length, about the same on fuel. Okay. 2024 Chevrolet Blazer. You can get it with a turbocharged four cylinder or a V6. Mm-hmm. Pricing goes from 45.5 and change to 55.2 and change in Canada. A lot less cargo, slightly less length, mm. and about the same for the V6 on fuel as what you get here in the four cylinder. I put that at the bottom of my list, mm. even without hearing the third one. Right, and the third one is the one I think is the closest and going to tempt the most people when you're talking about mid-sized two rows, which mm. is the 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Mm. Just re- redesigned two years ago. Comes with a V6 or the plug-in hybrid. No V8 in Canada for 2024, interestingly. Oh, they right. dropped it. Right, right, right. So 55.5 and change, about 55.6 is where you start on that. You can go all the way past 90K if you want to get oh, into easily. the plug-in hybrid. I think hybrids. the one we had was... Yeah. Close to that. Yeah, but you can get it in the price rate, same price range as this, mm-hmm. not with the same amount of equipment, though. Right. So, a little bit less on cargo, closest of those in length, and for the V6, a little bit better on fuel, but not enough to make a difference. I like this. I do, too. Over all of them. Here's my issue, though. Mm. A- among the competitors we've listed here, I think this is a great value. My issue comes in when I go into the dealership and I see a three-row mm. Atlas sitting next to it for um, $1,000 more. Right. And I go, well, you know, you get that little bit of extra length, even if you're not going to use the third row that often, then you've got it in spare. And then mm. once you do that, though, you're looking at a much broader list of competitors to shop against, and that is where things get complicated. But do you get the same standard features in the Atlas as you do here? Even if You I- do, yeah. It's, mo- it's almost entirely the same. There's got to be a catch somewhere. <laughs> well, there has to be, yeah. right? Like, you can't just tack on, like, another half a foot of car for $1,000. Like, it's clearly what they've done, but, like, yeah. there has to be something somewhere. I don't, I think it's very similar. In now, Canada, at least, in terms of packaging. Now, we have the Atlas next week. Yeah, stay so, tuned. Yeah, so There's I, more to come. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's exactly what it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, price point is pretty great. 
some people are still hung up on Volkswagen's incident from a few years ago, mm. and I don't know if they'll get those buyers back. And some people have said that there are issues with reliability with their electronics. Maybe in the Volkswagen's the past. I don't know if that's the case now. But if you're looking for something that's well priced with tons of value i put this on your short list absolutely completely agree thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already please hit that button down there that lets you subscribe maybe tick that bell too so you don't miss any more of our videos because we'd like you to see them and comment on them and let us know what you think you can also find us on all the major social media platforms so please seek us out and thanks for watching